Hey guys, uh, I had a request, request uh, to make a video how to care for Redback Salmer. Uh, I don't have one here to show you because it's hiding and I can't find it, but uh, I can still tell you the care. Um, first of all, you're going to want to get yourself a 15 to 20 long tank, terrestrial. Like that. This is a 20 long. Um, now, most people on YouTube I've seen if they ever even make a care video for a redback, say, put it in a, uh, you know, a 10 gallon for like five salamanders should be fine. Well, that's not true. Um, it is a very small salamander. It's a lungless salamander, which means it breathes through its skin and, uh, they need a lot of space because they're very territorial and even if you have one you're gonna need at least a 15 gallon because they uh, they uh, like to have their own territory and they have a big area they like to put their territory on now you're not gonna know what their territory is because they uh, will mark it, they'll pee on it, poop on it and that's how they mark their territory so if you have a tank 20 long, you're probably only going to get like, can probably only have like three salamanders in there. I'd say three to every 20 gallons would be good. Um, yeah, because they need their territory and if you don't give them that, you know, they're probably going to live, but it's not very healthy for them to be living in close proximity to each other because they don't like that at all it stresses them out they might even die from it but they might they'll probably live but uh... i mean do you want to be cruel to your pets or not because you, you always want to go the right way to go and that's this time you got to get a pretty big tank for a small salamander so um... now we discuss the tank you're gonna, that, that, I mean, uh, also don't get a high tank, like, this is a 20 gallon tank, I put it on its side. Don't get a high, get a long breeder, or a terrestrial, whatever you want to call it, because they don't climb, they go on the land. And, uh, you're wanting to pick, get yourself some, uh, either potting soil with no chemicals in it, or I'd say get some, uh, I like this stuff. Uh, I threw the package away, but I think it's called, like, Jungle Earth. It's from Zilla. Something jungle bedding or something like that. Um, very good. That's what I have in here is the main substrate at the bottom. And then you're going to get, you're going to want to get some, uh, leaves. Leaf litter. Um, ideally you'd want to have more than this, but since I only have one in here. Um, and then some other salamanders that don't need it. Um, as much, it's fine. He's been hanging around, uh, around in the middle. That's probably his territory. Um, you're gonna want the leaf litter, but you don't always just want to put it on top. Like you, you probably don't notice, but I, you can't notice. But I have it uh, in mixed in with the soil. So you want to mix in some leaves with the soil. Maybe try to shred them up a little too. Then put full leaves on the top. Try to get ones that are brown and crinkly and decaying because that's what they like. Better to hide in. And uh, then you wanna, you're going to want to put uh, half of the portion of the tank with moss. And don't separate the moss. You could, uh, however, put half of the moss on one side, half of it on the other. But you want a big patch of moss because they like to hide under that and uh, stuff like that. And then you want to you're gonna want to get uh, strips of bark like that. I have have that one. Have this one, which salamanders decide to lay some eggs under, so that's pretty cool. Uh, they're dusky salamanders, and um, you're gonna want to put one bark on the moss. Then you're going to want to put some bark on uh, the dirt that you have. And uh, you can also put leaf litter under the bark 
end on top of it or just on top, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can put a leaf litter on the moss. And this is the basic thing you want to do. Keep that pattern going. I mean, you know, you want to make it look like you just took a little section of uh, the woods and you put it, you know, in a tank. That's what you want it to look like, see? And you can get yourself some plants. Now, one I really recommend is a fern. Any type of fern that's not toxic. Now, do your research. Christmas tree fern is fine. Um, that's the only one I've ever used. And uh, for these salamanders, you're going to catch them outside, most likely, or they're going to be wild caught. So, I wouldn't recommend getting fake plants. Like, they're my tomato frog with that fake fern. I mean, you can get away with it, but. They prefer, and I know this because they won't do anything I've had in the past with a fake plant. But they will, however, hide and climb in sometimes a uh, real plant. So, I mean, you can put in fake plants for decoration, but real plants are nice. And um, with the bedding, if you are going to have plants, which I recommend, uh, you want about, uh, I'd say three to four inches of bedding sounds good like I got probably three counting this black it's probably four um so yeah and you don't have to do this thing I have with it looks like trees in my tank there's uh... I just stuck some wood up horizontal um so you wanna have that all then you can put in some rocks now Get some regular rocks. You you can get like that. You know whatever you find outside, and you want to boil them for a good minute to get all the parasites off them, and uh, do the same with the bark. Like I mentioned earlier, get some bark. Do the same with that, and uh, when you uh, boil it, boil it for two minutes. Make sure it's a good boil, and that'll get all your let it dry out. Uh, also, I'll get all the parasites off it. Let it dry out and cool completely. Then you're okay to put it in your tank. And uh, another plant I would like to say is a pretty good plant is... Uh, I, I don't know the name. If anybody knows the name of this plant, could you put it in the comments? Uh, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, they like to hide in this because this has a bunch of little roots and stuff. They always, they always go in that. Um... Same with vines like that and this one. They like vines and ferns. That's the best. And moss. There's primitive plants. You know, well, vines aren't primitive, but the ferns and mosses are. And um, you're going to want all that. Mostly natural, but then you're going to need a water bowl. Now, uh, I have this water bowl. I need to clean out. I know. Um, yeah, let me... Okay, see that water bowl? Right straight down. Have it kind of hidden because I want this to look as natural as possible. It's an Exoterra, uh, I think medium water dish or something. Fill it up just so that the salamander can get all the way under the water because they drink through their skin along with breathing through their skin because uh, they are lungless, like I said earlier. Um, you're going to want to get that water bowl and clean out every day. See, I just haven't cleaned it yet today. That's why it's dirty. Um, yeah. And uh, I haven't mentioned yet how, many, how much bark you want. Um, you want one piece of bark, a good sized piece of bark. Probably twice as long as the salamander. And three times as wide as the salamander. Um, per salamander. And if you only have one salamander... I'd guess, uh, I'd say put two in there so it has more choice. You don't have to, but you can. Uh, it gives them better choice. And, uh, you're gonna want to get a spray bottle. Uh, I don't have mine. There it is. Oh. Here's my spray bottle. Exoterra, Mr. Go with Exoterra every time, it's the best. That's what I want to work for one day. Um, get yourself a spray bottle. Um, you're gonna wanna, you know, demonstrate. 
This one's air pressurized, so you can keep spraying. And uh, this one, the spray bottle, is really good because you can set it to mist or just a jet of water. So here's how much you're going to want to spray it. Pretty much just get everything wet. You can make it so there's like little rain. You know, get the sides wet if you want. And especially get that moss wet and the fern. And uh, they'll like that because they can just walk on it. And... See, I'm still spraying. You want to get everything wet pretty much. Just to imitate a little rain shower. Like probably once a day because this is a woodland setup not a jungle so it doesn't want to be soaking just make it wet not soaking I think you know what I mean I don't think you can tell and you can look through the top see how everything's pretty much wet that's what you're gonna want once a day and then for feeding wise let me go get my, set the camera down, I'm going to go get what I feed them, just a sec. So what you're going to want to feed your salamander is uh, Drosophila, uh, sorry, <laughs> Drosophila melanogaster wingless fruit flies. Um, this is going to be the staple diet. Now if you're grossed out by this, don't get these salamanders because that's what they need in captivity. Or you can find some very small bugs outside, but remember that could kill your salamander because you never know what kind of parasites they're carrying. And I go with Josh's frogs every time for my fruit flies. They've uh, they've never disappointed me. Uh, you can get kits to set them up. Um, you can write down that name if you want to, so you can order off the, of them. And uh, you want to put in about, I'd say, every day you want to put in about. I'd say about uh, 10 fruit flies per uh, salamander because in reality they're not all going to get found and eaten so you're going to want some of them to get eaten and then as a secondary diet you can feed them baby crickets. Now don't get too big because they can get lodged in their throat and I'm going to get a picture of the salamander for you so if you go in the wild and catch one you're gonna know what it looks like. Here we go. That's what they're gonna look like. It's got a red back and uh, like a lead body. And sometimes you're going to find ones that are all the lead color. Let me see if I have my field guide. Yeah, here we go. Let me get to the page with the red back sound menu. So I can show you what they look like. Here we go. Um... That's what they're going to look like. That's a better picture than the other one. They got that uh, lead side body, you can see. Then they got the rest of their body is a red back. Now, I don't know if this book... This book does not have the lead coloration of it. Sometimes you're just going to find one with that lead color right there all throughout the salamander. But sometimes if... Like, sometimes you're going to find one and you're going to think it's a redback, so I'd stick 
Because sometimes it's not. It's sometimes it could be a ravine salamander, a ravine whatever it is. Um, but yeah, if you find one of these and it's got a red back, I'm sure it's gonna be a red back salamander. Now they are uh, four and seven eighth inches. That's how long they get. So go by that, and you're gonna know what kind of salamander it is. And I would recommend getting this field guide uh, now that I got it out. National Audubon Society Reptiles and Amphibians Field Guide. Pretty good one. So uh, there's your um, red back salamander care. Hope somebody gets some use out of this. And uh, happy herb keeping. Rate, comment, subscribe.